Have you put some plastic in the recycling today? Of course you have. In the last episode, Shuko and Jeff looked at a new and exciting technology for plastic waste sorting. It is based on terahertz waves. Today, I have some behind-the-scenes information about the artificial intelligence in this system. We will find out how it was trained to recognize different types of plastic. The terahertz scanner is the fancy new technology that makes plastic waste sorting possible. But some old-fashioned technology is just as crucial to the success of the system. They use cameras. Installing them in a recycling facility was one of the first things that the team from Bosch Research Singapore did. So we put two videos, one at the beginning of the line, one at, at, at another line. That is Siddhartha Analam again. You know Sid from the last episode of From Know How to Wow. He and his co-developers had two cameras filming the stream of waste on a conveyor belt. So the video in the front tells us basically what is everything that's coming in. An old sneaker. A plastic bottle. Another plastic bottle. A coconut shell. A piece of cardboard. The first AI they built was basically just a counter. So here we are able to see the number of plastics, number of aluminum cans, number of papers that is coming through. After the first camera has captured the material coming in, the workers do their job. So in between, we have the four to five manual people picking up the things. This is at the beginning of the project. Nothing is automated yet. And the second camera, once again, we were able to do the same thing. And we then were able to estimate how much are the workers picking. And more importantly, at the same time, how much is going down the drain literally that provided the team with important data. They could use it to estimate and decide whether there was enough potential and to find out if they should invest into developing technology for better plastic sorting. So this provides the evidence for the business case. They concluded that a plastic waste sorting AI could drive up the efficiency and accuracy of the sorting enough. The investment was justified. So they developed a second AI that can distinguish between plastic and other waste and between different types of plastic. For example, we are talking about PET and HDP bottles. But as you know, AI needs a lot of training data. I myself needed to be trained with at least 800 sentences from the real host, Jeff. And I am not done. So one of the key challenges is also to label a lot of data. Labeling the images from the waste sorting process sounds like a job for someone like me. So the team employed yet another AI to do the labeling. So ideally you don't want to be going through thousands of pictures per hour and then start framing everything, right? Usually, each worker only picks one type of plastic. That makes it easier. So can we use gesture recognition and observe the workers to identify how they are classified? When they installed this labeling system, there were some unforeseen difficulties. So we deploy the cameras on top of the sorters, and we know this person is responsible for a certain type of plastic. Then we identify every item that he picked through his gesture. So he picks up an item and drops it in the bin. And we, from our video analytics, we are able to see that item has now been picked. So now we use this to guide or to label the items. The solution this time was simple. They resorted more to social engineering rather than engineering. So initially, at least said, during the training, avoid using two hands. But it's very hard, right? Because they're used to it for so many years and so on. So one thing we did was, hey, why don't you keep your other hand in the pocket? So once they put it in the pocket, they are more reluctant to take it out and they, they just do it. But we just do it for the short period so we can train it as well. And that's how the AI directly learned its job from humans. At this point, Sid and his team have an AI that can distinguish between different types of plastic bottles. You may ask yourself, if they can do this based on camera images, why do they need a terahertz scanner? Well, the terahertz scanner can look inside the bottles. It can sort contaminated bottles from clean ones. So the system works best with the camera and terahertz scanner combined. It's always better with this chaotic system you rather have multiple sources of information and then combine them to have 
different weights so that you can make a better judgment. The key thing is sensor fusion. How do we combine a camera and the terahertz sensing technology to pick up these unique signatures? Yet another identifying data point comes from the terahertz scanner, or rather, the algorithms examining the terahertz images. They analyze how the bottom of a bottle is shaped. As you surely know, PET bottles often have deep indentations, forming a radial star pattern. But most HDP bottles have a flat bottom. So this is different because the way they are produced, the plastic items are produced. And through the terahertz, because of the X-ray capable, X-ray like capability, we are able to see this unique patterns that are at the bottom of the bottle. And this density difference we are able to uh, see and then use that to classify the different types of plastics. Plastic is only the beginning. The technology can just as well recognize other types of material, glass, cardboard, or metal, for instance. The scanner could prevent items from going into a shredder that could damage it. If pieces of metal damage the blades of a shredder, that can incur huge costs and delays. SID is in particular working on one other use case where the scanner can solve an imminent problem. If you have batteries and you shred them, they are not a fires. Batteries are a huge issue in waste processing facilities. So we have requests from Europe and Japan as well. Um, plastic sorting is one thing, but can you help us stop the fires, right? Because if they're batteries and you shred them, it's going to be fire. So the terrace allows us to detect these metals, and then we should be able to at least say what's the probability of this being a battery. So Sid's terahertz scanner could soon find its way from Singapore to Europe or Japan. He has also ideas for deployment in other countries, and not just in stationary recycling plants. So in most of the developing nations, the infrastructure is not there for a centralized waste sorting. It could be due to the volumes, it could be the government infrastructure, but some places like in Indonesia, there are a lot of islands, right? You can't be shipping waste around islands to a main sorting facility. So you have to have a more distributed system. The idea goes as follows. Instead of shipping everything to a processing plant, from where a good portion of the waste goes onto a landfill or into an incinerator anyway, bring the processing as close to the source of the waste as possible. Sorting at the source could be key as well in terms of reducing the effort required from the government resources demand. It could be much easier to set up a recycling system this way. What SID envisions is a mobile setup. A containerized solution. So imagine because of this terahertz technology, we can put everything into a, let's just say, 20 feet container. So now imagine this container on wheels. So instead of government building up a new fixed facility with a lot of millions of dollars in, they build containers and put it on the back of the trucks. They go to every village or multiple stops in a village or even hop on the boat and then go from one island to another island. And then they can recycle at the source at different locations. Other scenarios include setting up containers like that at big events. Similarly, the technology could be installed at stadiums or other venues. It could be a way to make an effort towards higher recycling rates and fewer recyclables ending up in landfills. All of that thanks to AI. Artificial intelligence like me. But to be honest, what would I be without the developers that programmed me? Anyway, in the next episode, my human colleagues will stay on the topic of recycling. Specifically, how to recycle those batteries that can cause a fire when they go through a shredder. More on May 10th. Subscribe if you haven't already.